All right, welcome everyone to a subcommittee meeting of the North Carolina Textbook Commission. This is December 11, 2019. And I'll do the roll call of those members who are on this subcommittee. Uh, Commissioner Kathleen Linker. Commissioner Linker present. Commissioner Angela Flowers. Commissioner William Chester. Commissioner Hannah Jimenez. Commissioner Hannah Jimenez present. Commissioner Lindsay Sice. Commissioner Sice present. I'm looking at um, Commissioner Angela Flowers' name, but I'm not seeing that she has unmuted herself. Commissioner Angela Flowers. This is Commissioner Linker. I I see her mic is going green and and then muting and going green and muting. So I'm not sure that she's not maybe having some technical difficulty. I do know she can hear us. We just can't hear her. Okay. Do you would you like for her to indicate um, in it through the notes that she's present? Yes, if she could just send it to me in the chat. Okay, so Commissioner Flowers has indicated in the chat that she's present. So you have four out of the five subcommittee meeting members here. Okay, and so with that, we're ready to start our discussion. So again, this is Commissioner Linker. And today we are going to, uh, the subcommittee's been to look at increasing the digital platform for training and also housing digital resources. Um, this is an effort to streamline and, and be more efficient. Um, we're looking at the possibility and talking of, of suggesting ways for front loading training and support and then, all, then using that front loaded uh, support and training as stored somewhere in the digital platform so that we can refer to it uh, later on in the process as well. So if we look at our agenda for the day, we just kind of have the three basic, we broke the focus into three basic topics um, and how it relates to uh, publishers, advisor training, and commissioner training. And you'll see that there will be some interconnections between the three different areas of, um, that we're gonna talk about. And this is probably the first of a few meetings. It's gonna take us some time to get information and get back together as we're trying to work together to come up with some suggestions um, for Dr. Fair to take and as we work on this process. Anybody have any comments before we this, start? This is Commissioner Flowers. Are you able to hear me now? Yes. You are? Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so I'm going to get started. Um, the first of the area that we're going to talk about is publishers. And some of the things that we had um, just we wanted to discuss is um, 
the possibility of having presentations or demos for the textbook commission uh, from publishers with the um, idea being the training would include what is needed for the commissioners to have a clear understanding of the digital pieces. Also, um, maybe some front loaded some training with technical specifications that would be required for the evaluation and the use of their materials. And fourthly, training or reference, those training or reference videos that they provide for the textbook commission would be available for reference for us for an entire, entire, uh, sorry, entire evaluation process. So basically ways that we can let the publisher share the training information with us so that we can navigate and understand their digital pieces so that we can evaluate the materials ourselves and be able to troubleshoot any difficulties during evaluation week. So that will be the first area that we talk about. Anybody have any suggestions, ideas? Commissioner Flowers, um, Commissioner Leaker, is there a way that the evaluators could be involved in that at the front end rather than hearing it second handed from the commissioners? The, the, that's something we could probably talk about. Um, but the publishers aren't allowed to have contact with the advisors during the blackout window. So that's usually why they train us and then we're there to support the advisors. Commissioner Jimenez, um, I think kind of what Ms. Flowers is saying, and I think you kind of mentioned it before, is just having like a video, because yeah. in my own personal opinion, I felt like I understood all of the programs better after the reconsiderations meeting than I did when I was actually trying to go through and really evaluate them, because I just wasn't sure how they worked. And so for the commissioners and the advisors to have access to some sort of video that just gives an in-depth description of like everything that can that the digital resource can do, I think would be extremely helpful. Uh, Commissioner Leader, yes, uh, Commissioner Jimenez, that, that's kind of what we were maybe trying to get towards, having a way for publishers to provide with us a video of how to specifically navigate their their um, submission and that we have that as a reference through the process so that we have it up front before we even get our materials as, as um, commissioners and that we also have a way to share that with the advisors and we have it stored for reference as we go through the evaluation cycle. I think that's kind of, we're all on the same page. This is Commissioner Flowers again. I totally agree with what everyone's thinking and saying so far. This is something um, totally out of the box. If I know we spend some of the initial train um, evaluation week training the evaluators, and what if they we trained them on one and then did an evaluation? like almost a practice together and went through the whole after we showed them how it worked or showed them the video or whatever, then they've evaluated that one publisher for their grade or something. I don't know, because sometimes at some point it gets blurred together. So this is Commissioner Sice. The only problem I see with that is just that we only get, you know, three copies of everything. And that would be my only concern was we wouldn't have access to all of the additional materials that we need to go with some of the digital pieces. I don't know. I mean, it could work, but. Commissioner Flowers, that's a good point. I think we're all kind of, uh, Commissioner Weaver speaking, I think we're all kind of looking at a way that we can have um, the publishers provide us um, some sort of resource or, and preferably a video, like a demonstration video uh, that they can provide us that we have to reference when we have the materials, that we're not sure how to um, find something that within we could go to this reference material to say, oh, here's where I go in their platform 
to see this. Now I'm going to go to that. Now I'm going to actually do that. Um, and how's that on our um, platform where it's accessible during evaluation week for advisors and then again for commissioners for the entire window because we get our materials before evaluation week and we'll start diving into it before advisors but we also do it you know during and after so um, I think the idea is that we probably need to see the if the publisher if we can get the publishers to work with us to come up with some sort of training video just not of the bells and whistles of the program but the how to go to where in the, their digital platform these things are they want us to that's part of their submission or their but, as a commissioner science what we might i don't know if we can suggest to them but what might be nice is if they could even just put a link or a tab or something on the website that they're providing that would say along the lines of you know go here first and then that's a little video on how to navigate the website you know what i'm saying yeah that's a good suggestion so they just had something within their digital platform that yeah you go to because then we wouldn't need any other resources like we wouldn't need additional laptops the the advisors could just access it while they're sitting at the table doing the digital piece anyway I think I think that sounds like um, something that if they get more logistics out of it would be helpful to, to us as well as publishers. Um, because I know they want us to be able to see what we need to see. We just are having some, some miscommunication at times. Yeah, Commissioner Hernandez, what are the um the actual rules surrounding like them having to have two devices? on their tables like is there any way that like commissioner size mentioned that we could access it on like the devices that we have just because i'm thinking a lot of that has to do with like different people are comfortable with different types of devices and so they get very confused when they have to move from like a mac to like a dell or an hp or even a chromebook if they just don't feel if you're not like technologically like adept <laughs> Oh, yeah, I agree with that. Um, I think well, it's, it's stated in the invitation. And and some of our questions may be things that we would need to like check with legal just to see the why behind it. But I, I feel like if I remember correctly, it is actually the publishers who do not want us to put their materials on personal devices because of after the evaluation evaluation process that the advisors not have access to their material. And we can't, mm. we, the commission can't control what happens after the evaluation. Does that make sense? Yes, definitely. And so I feel like it was a publisher's request that we only use their devices for their things. Um, and it was a way for them to be able to um, secure their materials from just access from anybody sharing a password. Okay. Commissioner Jimenez, that's definitely understandable. Um, I think it would be reasonable though to maybe like revisit that conversation because with the way logins are now, I think it would be fairly easy to just create a login that only works for like a certain week, um, which would allow like the advisors not to be able to access it at a different time, but just maybe a conversation we could revisit. Definitely. Um so we have one of the things to have them look at is a way that um, that instead of them providing devices, the advisors can use the personal devices to access the digital stuff. All right. That definitely is something we should we should bring back up because that has been um, this is 15 years. It, that's been there for 15 years. That could be there for a total reason that's not like you say not necessarily needed now but was when we first started looking at digital stuff 14 years ago. So that's what's for the publishers um, training and asking for if they if they're, would be interested in giving us some help with uh, some resources and possibly a link on a tab that's on the website that they can go straight to or giving us something that we can house and refer to if they um, can't or are not able to make that choice and then I also have them just 
the revisit the total idea of um, the advisors and commissioners being able to, well, now, as commissioners, we, we can. I mean, so it would just be like we do already. You know, we got the codes in our stuff, and we used our devices at home. So it would just be a matter of providing that same for the advisors. So we need to have that conversation with the publishers, if that's, um, or whomever, Dr. Fair sees that we should talk to about that, that feasibility. Because we already have that as commissioners. The codes and the logins that we have, that I'm assuming we don't have access to after the window closes. I don't go back and look, so I'm not sure, but I'm, that just came out. I was always by assumption. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Jimenez, yeah, I checked and it, it is expired. So yeah. just thinking that that might be a way to go, just because, you know, I felt like a lot during our last reconsiderations meeting, like a lot of the issues were about digital platforms. And if that yeah. can alleviate that concern before we get there, then maybe we won't have to have as many reconsiderations. Okay, so that's two things that we can um, look into to address that area. Um, and ask them to, and we're okay with that, um, making sure that, that they're also let us know the, um, that we need to have a clear understanding of the digital pieces, and that's another reason why we're asking for this front loading or uh, support before we get our materials, so that if we have a clear understanding of the digital pieces, then we're able to to um, help facilitate that process and hopefully not get into a reconsideration because we weren't able to clearly understand how to access their digital pieces. That about sum that up for everyone. Mr. Jimenez, yes, I think that sums up everything I see. So we want to go to the next topic, which is advisor training. And this is going to tie a little bit in. We kind of hit a little bit on it here on the public you know, what we let the public has to do. Um, because any training that they could provide to us as demos or presentations, if it's videoed or um, like Commissioner Jimenez suggested, available on a link, you know, on a tab on the website of some sort. Um, that is something that we also would like to have available for advisors to refer to um, that they can access during evaluation link. That can be virtual um, and then recorded and, and somewhere or attached with the link that they can go to to, to activate it. The other area for advisor training in general we want to talk about is maybe just um, in Commissioner Flowers, I think this is what you were kind of hitting on at the beginning of our conversation today, is some training that we can do with advisors before we get to evaluation um, that we do virtually, um, that can be recorded, and that then can be housed for reference as we get closer to the week or during the week. And we're um, trying to streamline that process a little bit and so that we're not spending two of the six days in training when we could, if we could narrow some of the generic training down ahead of time and then be able to just dig into the material. That would be our next area to look at. Um, and some of us, I think, maybe had some experiences with a training virtual, some virtual training online of materials. Um, DPI is doing some stuff with their um, open NC resources. And so I think um, there are some models that we could definitely look at to, to see how we can accomplish some of that. And that's probably going to be something that we need to tackle over at least another meeting, like get some ideas. What are some things that we think we could do before evaluation week that would be part of their training that they would, that advisors would need to complete before they come to, to the week. And that would be simply like criteria. Some of the criteria issues like that we could have them the virtual training and they could, they could go through it in a webinar um, or, um, and then it could be recorded to refer to later and also give possibly even a chance to do a mock um, 
evaluation form. It, it's really hard to do a mock evaluation form because you have to have really made up material. Well, I was thinking, sorry, Commissioner Jimenez, I was thinking even along the lines of even just creating almost like a canvas like training course um, yeah. that each module, you know, maybe they have different modules based on like what group they're evaluating for, but you know, all the general training in the beginning can all be the same. Just something where like we have, you know, accountability that everyone's gone through it but also like we don't have to spend the you know 48 hours to you know we should be evaluating those days because i think i think the advisors would be happier the more time to evaluate the materials and i think they would feel less rushed and i actually think we would probably get better evaluations in the long run this is commissioner flowers i think that sounds like a great idea maybe like a canvas thing I think that sounds good Commissioner Seif um, I love it and if we could even offer them digital literacy fees for it it would be even better oh yeah that would be good too to start with some digital learning yeah. credit because that's a hard one to get yeah um, and so is that something that if the four of us thought we could help Dr um fair come up with i mean the the course i'm i'm a little familiar with canvas i know jimenez and Slice. i feel like you guys have a lot more experience with with canvas we just we just transferred over to canvas in my district this year commissioner jimenez yeah i i've designed only two courses in canvas but i train on canvas all the time so i feel and I work with NCVPS to do course design in Canvas. So I feel like, honest, yeah, I'd be more than happy to help out with that. Right. This is Commissioner Flowers. I um, um, take lots of courses as well, but I have not designed any, but I'm willing to learn and help any way I can. Commissioner Seiss, same here. I think the four of us, Put our heads together we can do something really nice i think that i think we're all in a grand so we should we need to come up with a canvas course and, and decide some modules and maybe give up some responsibilities and and i know the dodger fair will support us and give it and give us some help as well um, i hope she doesn't I'm, I'm mind that i speak for her <laughs> um and I think that's the way to go. And I think giving digital credit um, will also be another enticement. And right. I think it should be a requirement that they have to complete this before they come to, to evaluation week. Mm -hmm. Oh, I agree, I absolutely. To get paid for it. Um, the credit would be, I, I personally have just gone, gone through a training and, and um, Commissioner Slice and I both went through a training through DPI and that it was, we weren't paid for the training, but we got digital credit for attending the training. And the, the compensation would be, the stipend would be for the actual work and evaluation. And I think that that's logistically um, possible. And I think that that could be an expectation of, an adv of advisors that if, if you're doing the job, then you need to do this training before. And then when you come to site, you're going to get paid X amount for evaluating Per day that you're evaluating on site. Does anybody see any problems with that? I think that would be an expectation that, that could be stated. I think that, this is Commissioner Flowers, I think that takes it to a whole new level of professionalism and it holds people accountable, like someone said earlier, and you know, it makes the process seem much more accountable and you do have to know what you're doing or maybe this isn't for you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Seiss, I agree wholeheartedly. I think too that it's gonna kind of weed out the people that are in it just to get the paycheck at the end thinking that it's gonna be something very easy. Um, but I mean, they put a lot of work into it and I agree that that's kind of a way to 
vet them and prepare them to do the best job that they can. So I, I love it. I think it's great. Commissioner Jimenez, I also think it gives a lot of the new people that came for evaluation week this week that had never been advisors before, it gives them an idea of what to look forward to instead of showing up on that first day and just kind of being completely blindsided about what the process is. Because you can hear one thing, but when you actually have to go through a training before you get there, I think you're just better prepared and in a better mindset to actually do the work. All right, so does anybody else have anything for the advisor training that you want to add? Um, we, we need to definitely get the specifics of what we need that to look like, but we're, we're in agreement that we want to do an apprentice this course with modules that can be some general and then maybe some that are specific to the area that they're evaluating um, that, would that would occur before evaluation week for digital credit. And then we'll hash out the specifics of that in the next coming months. Does that sound like a plan? Commissioner Stice, I like it. And the last part, which is kind of like the advisor training, because just about everything with advisor training should be also be commissioner training. And that is, again, commissioner training may be a Canvas course with modules that commissioners, because we're going to have some new commissioner members that are coming on board. It would be a way for them to get an idea of what it is before we jump into the week, just at the same time as advisors. Um, so for commissioner training, it would be the publisher training that we got divided at the beginning, plus training on the evaluation piece, the criteria sheets and all of that, and that we would all participate in that, can in that same canvas course that advisors would. And then maybe coming up with another Canvas for a module, or I don't think that's the whole course, maybe, but a module just geared to um, the report that we have to write for our um, for the state board. Commissioner Seif, that would be helpful beyond measure. <laughs> I know I'm a visual person. I know a lot of teachers are, and. I just kind of felt like going into that last day that I did not know what I needed to do. Even people explaining it to me, I needed to see it. Um, I think if we can get a piece where they can be walked through it, it would make it so much easier. Commissioner Jimenez, I also agree um, with Commissioner Sice. I think just having just a little bit of like seeing it and, and visuals of someone that's already done it, what they've written, just all of that in one central place and location would be a big help for any new commissioner, um, as well as just a reflection piece for some of our more veteran commissioners, just to look over and just remember the process because a whole year does go by. And honestly, I can't guarantee that I'll remember every single thing again in the next year. So it's just a place to reflect on what the process is supposed to be. So we would want to, and I might, I guess I'm probably asking this more for, I know who it is. Um, would you put all of it in one, one Canvas course, or would you make two separate courses, one for advisors and one for commissioners, and just have some of the modules in both? I would make two, or Commissioner Jimenez, I would make two separate courses and just have some of the same modules, which can easily be copied over from course to course. Okay, so looks like we have an idea of where we want to go and probably quite a bit of work to get into to start thinking about what that looks like. Um, but, I, but I'm actually really eager to jump into it. <laughs> so I feel like this will maybe um, make it more valid, more efficient, more streamlined, and a better use of our time. Especially our own time there on, you know, at, at evaluation, we can be better prepared coming into it. Commissioner Jimenez, I definitely agree. I think I'm pretty excited about all of this because coming, just being new last year and coming in and seeing what it can look like for someone else, I'm, I think it'll be um, an interesting, it, it's a interesting change, but a good change for everybody involved. 
Commissioner Flowers, I think also it will make it so much more consistent and the documentation is there in case anybody ever had any questions, even for the commissioners, as far as what all work is involved and what about what added value or value is added to the whole process. I think maybe we should talk about next steps. We probably need another meeting um, and between now and then um, get an idea of how we want to get started or where. And I think that um, I, I, need, I probably need a couple of days to go. If you guys want to set up another meeting for it, we're getting close to Christmas break. So you guys tell me when would be a good time to set up another meeting that we can, can start giving up. We can work together on what, or if we're all going to work together, when we're going to do it, so we can kind of slowly get it going. Because um, I don't know about you guys, but after Christmas holidays, it's like wham, and next thing you know, it's. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Slice, are we meeting as a commission in January? I think we meet in the January, February, June, January. Okay. That, ha that hasn't, well, the that timeline hasn't really come out yet, but I think we're looking at, we usually do February, because January okay. is a rough month with weather. Right. Um, uh, maybe the beginning, middle of January, February. So do you want to try to meet as a, the fourth subcommittee um, in January to give us, you know, three weeks of, to kind of think about some ideas of not that I was the yeah, commissioner side. That's what I was thinking is because I mean it's hectic, like you said, from now until next Friday, it's ridiculous. But what about the week after we come back? Not that first full week in January, but that next week where we're kind of settled back in. Oh, I'm pulling up my computer. Yeah, I'm trying to pull up a calendar here. So maybe the week of uh looks like january 13th is that monday the 13th through the 17th commissioner linker do you want me to set up a google poll for dates during that week uh, yeah let's do that let's set up google for the week of, Jan of january 13th to the 17th um does this time work for everyone or do we need to look for uh alternate times as well Commissioner Sice, it works for me on Wednesdays and Fridays when I don't have any meetings. I'm on planning, so this is fine. I think my, my concern is um, in the being size and flowers, because you two have classroom teaching responsibilities. Is this is something that we can do it, and it's going to take us some time. Is it something that we need to find if we can get it like a half a day sub or is it not worth the time for that? Because it's more to put in for a sub than it is to use your planning time. This is um, Flowers. Um, this is good for me um, to Wednesday, Thursday and Friday from after 2.15. Commissioner Slice, same for me, 2.15 is perfect. Anytime after that's fine on those same days. Yeah, same here. Yeah, I can, Commissioner Jimenez, most of the time I can probably make anything work as long as there's not like a meeting that the school has or something. So I think Dr. Fair, if you just give us, um, let us do a poll at, and make it the afternoons of these days. And then maybe um, that gives Jimenez a chance to look, everybody look at your schedules to make sure you don't actually have a, something already scheduled that you can't commit to. So we're saying Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday after two o'clock. And how much time do you think you'll need for this? So I can set up uh, just a time frame in the Google poll. I'm going to defer to Jimenez and size up like they've got a lot more experience with what it takes to start working on doing this Um, Commissioner Jimenez, if we're actually like going to actually start getting into the canvas, like, I mean, I don't know how the, if we can really put a time on it, I would say definitely the minimum would probably be two hours. Um, but it could, if we're, as long as we're not looking for a finished project product, I would say two to three hours. 
yeah, no, I think collecting probably. materials. Yeah. Yeah, I think we just picked up maybe an hour, maybe three to four to get started. I don't think we're going to be able to not, I don't think the expectations should be that we finish a course on that day. But if we get started on, you know, what do we think it needs to be included? What, what are the modules, you know, kind of like hash through that? Does that sound yeah. good? Commissioner Menez, yeah, definitely like having a Google Doc where we start like planning and then linking documents, I think is the great starting place. So yeah, probably, yeah, then just an hour. I'd say we probably get everything linked to that planning document within an hour. Okay, so two to three. Sounds good two. to me. Commissioner Slice, that's fine. Flowers, um, 2.15. Okay. Commissioner Slice, that's even better. That gives me time to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'll set up a doodle poll with the dates for that week um, for 2.30 to 3.30 on those dates. And then you all can respond back and then I'll let you all know the results. Okay, thank you, Dr. Chair. All right, thank you. Does anyone have any other comments or questions? Anything that we need to talk about? I think we, we briefly we hit the, the general key points in the agenda. So are we all okay and ready to sign off? Sorry, Commissioner Seitz, I was just rereading the agenda to make sure we hit everything. I think we actually talked about everything. Um, I'm excited. I already have ideas in my brain about what we're going to be doing for this thing. I, this Commissioner Laker, I want to thank you ladies because I think we're going to get a lot of work done. Yeah. And I think we're really going to love the changes that are going to come. It'll make it our use of our time and the advisor time. And get more and get quality quality outcome. Commissioner Menez, yes, I agree. I think this is gonna be great. I'm excited. Commissioner Flowers, I'm excited. <laughs> so I think with that, I think Dr. Fair we're, we're about ready to wrap it up. All right. You ready? Okay. Um, we don't need to make a motion or anything because it's a good thing, correct? Yeah, we're still operating the same way. So I do need to make a recommendation. I just, I, can someone um, make a motion that we adjourn? Commissioner Seiss, I'd make a motion that we adjourn the meeting for December 11th. Commissioner Jimenez, I second. So, um, Commissioner Winters, yay. <laughs> the motion's been made and, and seconded for us to adjourn. If I in favor, say aye. 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 Commissioner Slice, aye. aye. Flowers, aye. Commissioner Jimenez, aye. Commissioner Winkler, aye. Thank you very much, ladies. We'll be in touch. Christmas holiday. Merry Christmas. Merry you Christmas. guys have a good holiday break. All right. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.